Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. The first topic in Chapter 5, Principles of Force. As always, you'll learn exactly the information you need to sit your final exam, and today you need to be able to identify what is meant by force, to understand and apply the equation involving force, mass and acceleration, and to describe the effects force has on aspects of sports performance. Force is measured in newtons and can simply be defined as a push or a pulling action applied upon an object. Sport employs many different forces and to be successful in sport you need to be able to use these forces to your advantage. They are applied in large quantities when a rugby player makes a tackle or in a more controlled way when a golfer plays a chip onto the green. Push forces are directed away from the body or object producing them and can be seen when playing a forward drive in cricket or throwing to a base in rounders. Pull forces are directed towards a body or object and are used in rowing to propel the boat through the water. The 17th century physicist Sir Isaac Newton discovered three laws that govern motion and gravity and we'll take a look at these now and apply them to a sporting context. Newton's first law is the law of inertia, which states that an object in motion stays in motion at the same speed and in the same direction, and an object at rest stays at rest unless acted on by an external force. The first part of this statement relates to moving objects and explains that a force is required to cause a moving object or body to speed up, slow down, or change direction. This means that when a volleyball player performs a spike, the ball will move in a straight path and at a constant speed until it hits the ground, makes contact with the net, or is blocked by an opponent. The second part of the law states that a force is required to move a stationary object, which is why a football will remain on the spot until an external force is applied by the penalty taker. Our second law is the law of acceleration, which states that an object will accelerate when acted on by an external force, and that the acceleration is proportional to the force and is in the direction by which the force acts. We all know that when we take a golf shot, the ball will accelerate or speed up as it's struck. It also makes sense that the more force we apply, or the harder we swing the club, the greater the acceleration will be, and that the ball will move in the same direction as that of the force applied. Fortunately, Newton's second law can be explained using a very simple formula, force equals mass times acceleration, where force is measured in newtons, mass is measured in kilograms, and acceleration is measured in meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. Why not pause the video now to calculate the force applied by the sprinter as they accelerate out of the starting blocks, and remember to state the correct units to avoid dropping a mark. So in this example, the sprinter has a mass of 80 kilograms and accelerates out of the blocks at a rate of three meters per second squared. We can multiply these values to discover that their muscles must have applied a force of 240 newtons. Newton's third law of motion is called the law of action and reaction and states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. To put this in context, if a high jumper applies a force of 200 newtons against the ground at takeoff, a reaction force of 200 newtons will be applied back against the high jumper in exactly the opposite direction. This ground reaction force is actually what's responsible for propelling their body into the air so that they can gain the height needed to clear the bar. So now that you're able to name, define and explain each law of motion, we'll take a look at one final example from sport that summarizes all three laws in one. When a swimmer takes their marks in the blocks before a race, their body is stationary or in a state of inertia. When the buzzer sounds, their muscles provide the external force needed to produce movement. The amount of force applied will determine how quickly they accelerate and therefore how far they are able to dive before they make contact with the water. If we know the mass of the swimmer and their acceleration, we can calculate how much force they produced using the equation force equals mass times acceleration. Finally, the swimmer applies a force backwards and downwards against the blocks, and the equal and opposite reaction force that results gives them the height and distance they need to gain an advantage from their dive. Well done, you've just covered everything you need to know on the principles of force. Take a look at the knowledge checklist to make sure you understand everything correctly and come back and watch this video again whenever you find the time for a quick recap. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you in the next one.